Hey guys, Mark here and I'm here today with Jake. This is the series you want to watch if you're like us and you're always thinking about touring and so waiting for the borders to reopen. And if you are like me, you're dying to tour but I have no idea how or when to start. Mark, who is an avid tourer who has been on many trips on his motorcycle, we are going to take a look at how and what he packs for a motorcycle trip. This series has been brought to you by Direct Asia. Hey bro, what are you doing? Protecting my investment la. You never know when you get into accident wa. No bro, not like this la. If you want to get yourself covered, go with Direct Asia. They are the only moto insurance company offering 30% NCD after holding your NCD 20 for 2 years with an NCD protector plus optional benefit. 30%? Then if my friend want to ride the bike, how? Get the Any Rider optional benefit. Direct Asia will protect the unnamed rider that you authorize. Also, if you mess up your bike, you can send your machine to any workshop of your choice. For more information, check out Direct Asia's website. Links in the description below. Terms and conditions apply. Okay, so Mark, why don't you tell all of us what do you normally bring? Okay, first stop is your passport, right? Uh, no one is going to get out of the country without their passport. Right, there's some people who don't bring, huh? And then what I like to do is to have my lock card. This is proof that you own your machine. Very important, just in case people play punk with you. And then another thing I like to do is to not keep all my eggs in one basket. I separate my cash, I separate my cards. I only take out what I need for that time period only. So if you lose, you lose a little bit, you don't lose everything. Yeah, you know what I mean? Good advice. Currency. I like to go to Mustafa, maybe change one, two hundred dollars for, for that trip, right? For that. And then when I reach my destination, if I need more, just draw some more money. Okay. GPS. I'm not good with destinations, I'm not good with directions. GPS tell me where I need to go, right? And because if you use GPS on your phone, mm -hmm. you will need power on the bike. Right? Go get your go get one of those power sources. They fit into your they fit right directly onto your battery or, or goes into a fuse box. Simple. For those of you who have uh, dedicated Garmin devices, all the better, right? Because then, again, you don't keep all your eggs in one basket. If you don't have a USB uh, bus on your bike, power banks, power banks, right? One, two, maybe three, depending on how, you, how long you're gonna ride. Next up, what I like to do is to get myself a multi-adapter, right? These have got many, many different prongs and it's gonna fit basically any country you go to. Lah. I like to get the one with the USB ports multiple USB ports. That way I can charge my phone, I can charge my comms, I can charge anything that's USB powered. If you bring yourself a, like a PC or a computer and you need more, get yourself a multi-plug, right? Then you don't have to get multiple of these. You just put it in and then now you have more power out outlets and that's what you want. Yes. And if you're like me, not necessarily a must, but... What's it, kid? No. Oh. Toiletries back. I don't like that liquid soap moisturizing feeling, you know, when you're showering. It feels like you shower and you shower and you shower, the soap's not coming off. I like bar soaps. So that's why I bring my own toiletries back. It's not a must, but it's a good if you have. Next thing that a lot of people overlook spare glasses, especially for those of you who use glasses. I've lost mine and I didn't have a spare. Why? Oh. Sorry, let's go again. <laughs> <laughs> if you're using if you're using data on your phone, you will need a SIM card. These SIM cards are really, really small these days, huh? Uh, uh, that's what Rachel said! Oy. If your phone has a dual SIM tray, then this will work. If it doesn't, especially iPhone users, then you will need a spare donor phone. Donor phone gets plugged into your bike or plugs in, gets plugged into your power bank. It shares internet throughout, right? Then you're, you're, you're good to go. Lah. Another thing that can potentially really save your trip, spare bike keys. All right, I have heard so many stories about people losing their keys, either it dropping in a hole that's too deep or getting nicked by somewhere and not having a spare key. It'll destroy your entire ride. 
And another very, very important thing. Some of you will know that both of us work in the music industry and our ears are our money, right? Earplugs. The sound in your helmet is stupidly loud, right? You really want to protect your hearing. So after we plug our ear holes, what else do we need to pack? Do you... Clothes, clothes. How clothes. do you get clothes? Clothes. Let's go with clothes. So clothes, this is all you bring. This is not just for illustration. No, pretty much, yeah. This is all I bring. Minus the underwear and all the sensitive stuff. Lah. Okay, so tell us what's all this. First up, safety. Safety. You always, 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 always want to think safety. You never know when a wild boss is going to dash across the road or a dog or a monkey, right? Riding gear is always the number one priority. Have good riding gear. If you are a rider who likes to remain dry, then most jackets come with a waterproof liner. You can choose to get a liner, but if you're like me, right? I like to get wet. I like to get wet. I, I, I prepare to get wet. So I wear mesh jackets and all that, you know, everything tights. So I just get wet and not a problem. I don't feel cold. Second up, jerseys. Okay, this, what, what jerseys do, one is to keep you comfortable because it's dry fit. And then second, you don't get all the rash on your hands or your arms from the riding jacket, right? It's not going to irritate your arms. So that's why jersey, very, very important. And then you have your riding pants, as important as your riding jacket. These pants are going to help you with your road rash. So if you go down with a bike and you slide, pants will help you. And then obviously, of course, there's not here, riding boots, right? Always have your riding boots, right? This is also very important. If the bike falls onto your legs, you know, you might not break your ankle, right? Moving forward, another thing that you go with pants is compression pants, right? So these also help you with your, with your rash and your thigh and whatnot. And it also helps you slip your pants on a lot easier because it's all slippery, right? Moving on, we've got my going out shorts. Okay. It's something I use when I reach the destination. You don't want to be wearing your riding pants or your riding jeans or, or whatever it is. Very kawaii, right? So you get a normal pair of shorts with shorts. Slippers. If you like slippers, you wear slippers, you like shoes, bring yourself a, a, a pair of shoes. Easy, easy. T-shirts, right? Triple three T-shirts. Don't need to bring so many. One, two, more than enough. The whole idea is you want to pack light. You don't want to be carrying 50, 60, 80 kilos worth of stuff. For what? You pack light. You bring two, right? Why can I afford to bring two? Because I bring these. These are detergent sheets, right? They dissolve in water and act like detergent. Oh. So when you reach your hotel, just take out one and, and wash. Lah. These are all dry fit. They dry really fast. By the next day, they should be dry and should be ready to go. Right? And that's how it works. What I like to do is also laundry bag. Just keep all your dirty clothes in one place. Huh? You don't want to be mixing your, your clean clothes with dirty clothes. And another thing that is super duper important. Swimwear. Swimwear. You go to a hotel with a pool, you want to swim. You go to a hotel by the beach, you want to swim. You go to a hotel by the lake, you want to swim. Say it together now. You want to swim. Naked. No. Right. Swimwear. Speaking of triple three stuff, right, I see something very interesting over here. It's the triple three head buff. Just like with the jersey, just like with the compression, it helps your helmet slip on. But I heard this is out of stock. Yes, but the stock's coming in. Watch our space. Soon. Then there's also this uncle rope. What, what is this for? Okay, so this uncle rope uh, is, is a, a genius invention. What we do, if let's say you go to the hotel, you need to mm. wash your clothes, right? This hooks onto one end, it becomes your clothes liner. Ooh. Hang your clothes on it. Simple, right? Simple. Then also what I like to do, just in case, because I use very uh, long, long riding boots, right? Is to throw a lot of powder in my boots. Then you don't get, you don't have to deal with foot rot and, and, and yeah. it can get quite disgusting like, if you're on the road for like 10, 12 yeah, okay. hours. Bring, bring your powder. Bring, bring your the powder. powders. The powders really, really work wonders. All right. So we have our Uncle Rope. What other kind of tools do we need? Tools? tools right? Good question. Okay, tools. There's a few things I recognize here, but can you tell us about What's all these other things? Ken, no problem. Previously, I mentioned about safety. This is a first aid kit. Always have, get yourself a first aid kit. Simple po chai pills, you know, uh, plasters, charcoal pills, Panadol. And moving on to tools. This is one of which that you should really, really have. A tire iron. You're going to have, you need one of these to pull your tires out of your rim. And the only reason why you would do that is because you have a flat. Mm. Speaking of flats, everybody in your group, everybody needs to be carrying tubes spare tubes for the front and rear everybody even if you have a tubeless tire because sometimes you can get really big holes that one of these can't fix right so it's very very important to get yourself 
some spare tyres. Speaking of spare, spare clutch and brake levers. These things break so easy when your bike goes down, even if it's a stationary fall. Really, really, really important. And you don't have to buy new. Look at mine. These are, these are used, right? my old ones. Free. Another thing that you should have, maybe just one person in the group, if you're going in a group, wrench kits, right? From your number eight to number 27. This is a 27. This is for the rear axle nut of an Africa Twin CRF 1000L 2016. Very, very important to have. Cable ties. This is not for you for anything funky in the room, okay? This is just in case stuff breaks on your bike or you need to tie stuff down, cable ties. A uh, little trick. If you guys don't know this, you can take two cable ties, right? Put them together and you extend. Yeah, this is I know. Why you know? Bedroom. Speaking of tools, a little tip and very, very important. Heat resistant epoxy, right? You can get this like in a tube or you can get the liquid ones. These have saved many, many bikes and I've seen them firsthand so many times. Engine gets a crack, starts leaking oil, slap one of these on, done deal. Comes back to Singapore, doesn't, doesn't fix his bike for months. Love this. Tiny little toolkit. Very, very useful, right? You've got sockets, you've got Tox wrench, you've got Allen key. Easy, simple, simple thing to have. Would you say the size doesn't matter? Size doesn't matter. Moving on. Next up, straps. Jake's favorite item. Again, not for the bedroom. Mm. Right? Straps tie everything down. You can literally tie anything or anyone. Yep. First hand experience, always the best. I didn't see that coming. And of course, there are certain things like your chain loop, what I call the uncle straps, right? This one, awesome, awesome stuff. And then you've got your creature comforts. I personally love hammocks. Mm. So I bring my hammock anywhere and everywhere I go. Especially if you're at the beach, you just flip it down, pops your auntie. And then you've got your USB fan. Now I've been to many, many hotels where the aircon was all subpar and whatnot, and then you cannot sleep because it's too warm. So USB fan, easy, easy, done deal. And then if you are like triple three and you're doing content creation, you will need a laptop. Laptop. Right? We don't recommend you bring laptops because the road is a harsh place. So you really want to protect this. I put this in along with all the clothes and whatnot. So it's got a bit of cushion. Okay, so now we know what's what. Mm. What's next? Next, we're going to show you different luggage options. So Mark, I've mm. never had any of like all this. I only have this mm. soft bag that goes on my back. So like, tell me about how you pack or whatever this is. These are three different examples of hard pannier systems, right? You've got soft pannier systems, you've got many different kinds. But if your bike doesn't allow you to install pannier systems, then you might want to go with this, right? It's a waterproof duffel bag. Very simple, you, you pack all your stuff inside, you put it on the pillion seat, and then you use the rock straps or any other straps that you can get your hands on, strap it to the bike, done deal, off you go. So of course, everyone will eventually find their preferred way of packing their stuff, but this is how I do it. Hopefully this video has helped you get a clearer picture for when the borders reopen. Yeah, if not you end up like me, where I pack like 20 clothes, underwear, oh man, there's so much diet. And that is why we've prepared a checklist in the description just for you guys. With that, I'm Mark. And I'm Jake. Thank you to Direct Asia for making this video possible. Stay tuned to the next episode where we share tips on how to get your motorcycle ready for touring. And with that, we'll see you on the road.